My name is David Watts, and I'm, a, I'm one of the partner early stage researchers. I'm Canadian. I'm an uh, applied physicist. I studied in Vancouver, but I also hold a British passport, which enables me to work um, here in Europe. And uh, now I'm working for the Terra Foundation, uh, developing detectors for hadron therapy. So I was coming from the high energy physics world of detectors, and then I had contact with the Terra Foundation, and at this moment, then I started applying those uh, techniques and these detectors for medical applications. My specific project in the, in the partner um, project is um, to develop detectors for in-beam PET. So we're using the conventional detectors that are used in medicine, in nuclear medicine, uh, in hospitals and things like that, and trying to adapt on the, the fundamental elements of the detector to make them faster, more efficient. Um, so essentially we can have a, a faster scan because one of the chan uh, challenges with the hadron therapy application of PET is that the activity in the body is very low. I'm building detectors, testing prototype detectors. Um, we're developing new electronics for uh, reading out those detectors at faster rate, uh, with better performance. Um, I should look at the mechanics of how to put the things together, because it's a bit challenging the, the environment of hadron therapy because of the way the beam is coming in and uh, the patient bed and things. It's, um, it's a bit challenging to foresee a geometry that's um, adaptable to this kind of situation. So for each center, there needs to be a dedicated um, pet design that um, we cannot use the conventional ones that are used there commercially. But what I like is that I'm always doing something different. Um, and especially working here at the Terra Foundation, we're, we're not a big group. And so we build detectors from scratch, from start to finish. So we have the opportunity to, to sort of get our hands dirty with all the aspects of the detector. So the mechanical parts, um, even the machining from time to time. Of course, the, some simulation work, um, calculations, and data analysis, um, electronics, uh, firmware, all these things. So that's a rare opportunity, I think, because, uh, well, in general, it's, it's easy, again, as I was saying, to get put into a lab and to do one little task. The most challenging thing is knowing when to, when to stop or what to do and what not to do, because I guess in research there's so many things we could be doing, and it's, um, we just don't have enough time to do everything. And as, also, as I said, we're a small group, so we need to be quite efficient uh, to try to reach the goals on time. And so I think it's, it's challenging for, for me to, to try to see everything in a, in a big picture and to see the overview and to keep that, that uh, sort of final goal, to keep it on track and not to get distracted by small measurements or small details and things like that. I would like to continue learning for the rest of my life. I think that's probably the most important thing. So I don't ever like to be doing the same thing um, too much. And so as long as I'm learning something, I'm happy.